Turn to page four, as we're going to sing all three verses of To God Be the Glory.
You can remain seated as you open your hymnals to page 10. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of how great that works. Haley up here. I'm going to get to that in a minute. 
I want to call Micah and Haley up here for just a minute to recognize them for graduating from college. Um, Micah, Stephen Burdett, and Haley Marie Ackberry graduated yesterday from um, Point University, and we are so proud of them. And you may have seen on social media some of the pictures and so forth. So we've got a couple of books we're going to present them with. Um, this one's called Jesus Day by Day by Beth Moore, and we're going to give that to Haley. And this one's called Jesus Today. Uh, also, the author, Sarah Young, the author of Jesus Calling, this is like a sequel to that. We're going to present that to Micah. So we're proud of them for graduating from college yesterday from Point University. But there's something up here just kind of blinding me right now. Some, I need sunglasses or something. What is this, Haley? Look at this. It's a rock. Since they've been here, they became engaged a couple of Sundays ago on Easter Sunday. So that's why I called them a girlfriend at first. But, but they're going to be married hopefully in a, in a year or so. So we just want to congratulate them, especially on college and their engagement. So thank you. If you will please stand with me and open your hymnals to page 136. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of Are You Washed in the Blood?
When we take communion, it symbolizes the sacrifice that Jesus, that Jesus made on our behalf. The wine and the bread and the communion represent the blood and the body of Jesus that was poured out and broken as a sacrifice for our gift of salvation. Uh, and just like some gifts will always remind us of where we were when we received them, communion reminds us of where we were when we met Jesus. Think about where you were the moment that you met Jesus, the moment that you trusted in Christ as your personal Savior. Communion is a time when we collectively reflect on the covenant that binds us together. It also is a time of, to individually reflect on the price that Jesus paid for us to be in relationship with them. Uh, this bread is my body, he says, as he breaks the bread. And you thought it was just a ritual. You thought it was just an observance. You thought it was a memorial to something that which was done way back then. You thought it was just a reenactment of a meal that he had with them. But it is so much more. It is a meal that he has with you. He's going to do that today. He would. He was. In t it was intended to be an. I can't believe it's me. Pinch me. I'm dreaming. Invitation to sit at God's table and to be served by the King Himself. At the supper, Jesus is not a guest, but He's the host. At the supper, Jesus is not the served, but the servant. It was Jesus who, during the supper, put on the garb of a servant. Often we think of the supper as a performance, a time that we're on stage and God is in the audience, a, a ceremony in which we do the work and He does the watching, but that's not how it was intended. It was, if it was, Jesus would have taken his, his seat at the table and relaxed, but that's not what He did. He fulfilled His role as a servant by washing their feet. And He fulfilled His role as a Savior by forgiving granting them the forgiveness of their sins. He was in charge. He was on center stage. He was the person behind and in the moment. And it is a holy invitation, a sacred sacrament, bidding you to leave the chores of life and to enter into His splendor. He meets you at the table. And when the bread is broken, Christ breaks it. And when the wine is poured, Christ pours it. And when your burdens are lifted, it is because the king and the apron has drawn near. One last thought. What happens on earth at the table is just a warm-up act for what will happen in heaven. So the next time the messenger calls you to the table, which is today, drop what you're doing and go. And most importantly, be sure you're still eating at his table when he calls you home. What a great way for us to celebrate God's goodness as we partake of the Lord's Supper. I'm going to ask the men if they would to come forward at this time as we reflect back on what Christ did for us upon the cross. And before we do, I'm going to give you a few moments to, to personally pray. First um, John 1 John 1.9 says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. And I want to share a little Nick story with you. I've always done this throughout the years. If we have communion, give you a chance to pray silently. And then I'll pray corporately. And one of my kids, my, my youngest son, just I think it was. I might be wrong. One of my kids recently said, Dad, you do that too quick. You rush it. He said, give us a little extra time. So I may give you a little extra time this morning. I, I love it when I learn from my kids. I learn so much from my kids. Always have. So let's let's bow our heads and pray. The Bible says that we are we are to whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats the bread and drinks the cup. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes and, and you pray privately and ask the Lord to forgive you of anything that may not be right in your life at this time, and I'll do the same.
Father, we humbly bow before you at this time to ask you to forgive us of anything that may not be right in our lives at this time. Lord, we thank you for the, the shed blood of Jesus Christ that paid for that sin. If we just repent, it's not automatic. We have to repent. Repent means to turn from our sin. We can't ask for forgiveness and keep going there. But Lord, we just pray that you forgive us now and, and bless us as we partake of the Lord's Supper. And look back to what you did for us on Calvary's cross. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. <coughs> the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread. And the bread is a direct representation of his body that he freely gave, laying down his life as the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the world. I'm going to ask our deacon Marvin Turner to ask the Lord's blessing upon this portion of the service. Yeah, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We can partake of your bread and Father. We just, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. said this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen? Amen. After Jesus and the disciples had the last supper, it says that they sung a hymn before they went away. So we're going to sing another hymn at this time before we have our message. Thank you. All right, if you will, please stand with me and open your hymnals to page 244. We're going to sing the Spirit of the Living God one time through. Page 244.
your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1 and John chapter 16, and there's sermon notes in the bulletin if you'd like to follow along with us. This morning we're going to talk about the spirit of wisdom and revelation. One of my favorite passages of scripture from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians and Philippians are my two favorite uh, passages of scripture. And this morning we want to go back to the basics of establishing a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, first of all, I'm going to read some scripture to you from Psalm 18. You know, when we're focused on God, we will find everything that we need. Think about that, that this morning. When we're focused on God, we will find everything that we need. Psalm 18, 1 through 3 says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Amen. Let me ask you this morning, how dependent are you on the Lord? Do you turn to Him for wisdom? Do you seek His guidance in everyday life? Do you trust Him with every aspect of your life and surrender all aspects of it to His care? What about when difficult hard to imagine uh, situations arise. Uh, then do you depend more and less on his complete knowledge of the circumstances and his total ability to handle anything you face? An implicit invitation to choose dependent trust in the Lord. Psalm 18 describes the Lord as our strength and our rock, our fortress, and our deliverer. So why do we ever hesitate to put our trust in Him who alone is worthy of our praise? Uh, this passage is filled with phrases that encourage us to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. And so let's wisely fill our minds with the truth about who God is. Uh, the images in this psalm can help us to hang on to those truths. God is, for instance, our shield and our stronghold. God is our everything. Psalm 113 says, Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun and its, to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. Amen. All that God commands or calls us to do is for our own good. Case in point, praise the Lord. Uh, it's sprinkled throughout the Psalms. You read through the book of Psalms, and throughout it, you'll see where we're commanded to praise the Lord. What good might result from our praising God regularly or sincerely? Well, for starters, praising Him will keep our eyes on Him and off of our troubles, off of the, the troubled world that we live in. When we're focused on God, we will find everything that we need. Amen. Now, what if praising the Lord were a built-in part of our everyday life? If we praise God as naturally as we breathe, what effect might that praise have on our attitude about life, on our perspective on the events in our private world and in the world at large, and on the strength of the hope with which we live? So let's work on teaching ourselves to praise God, not only when things are going well, but also when things are going badly. Let's discover the blessings and that God undoubtedly has for us when we choose to praise Him in all of life's circumstances. So again, this morning we want to look back to the basics of establishing a personal relationship with God. And we do much of that through praising Him and worshiping Him. Uh, when we come to a point in our time in our life that we trust in Christ as our Savior, some as a child, some as a teenager, some as an adult, and then one day we go to heaven, but what about all that time in between? We are to establish a personal relationship with the Lord, and we're to grow. Uh, when we're first saved, we're babies. We're babes in Christ, but we're to grow in, in our relationship with Christ. So what do we need to do to grow as Christians? Or do we just want to stay babies forever? Uh, babies are supposed to grow physically, and we're supposed to grow physically. Spiritually, if not, then something's wrong. Uh, we, I had the privilege of holding my little grandbaby yesterday, nine months old, let her sleep in my lap for a little while, 
And um, I, I noticed when, when Carly was feeding Emerson that instead of that little bottle she was using last week, she had a bigger bottle. So she's only nine weeks old, but she's already drinking more and more and more and growing. And that's the way babies are supposed to grow. Uh, and we're supposed to grow as babies in Christ. We're supposed to grow spiritually. Some of us may have lost some time. Uh, maybe our, our growth has been stunted for a season. That's okay. But now is when life is going to get exciting if you let it, if we begin to grow and not wander back off and, and be consumed with the, our cares of this world. Jesus has promised us abundant life, and that comes when we grow in our personal relationship with Him. The writings of the Apostle Paul have always been some of my favorite scriptures. Again, Philippians, Ephesians, my favorite books, but especially his prayers. And this morning, we're going to look at a prayer which Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus here in chapter 1. Later on, we may look at another prayer in chapter 3. But one of our duties as Christians is to love the brethren, to love one another, and to pray for one another. I love the way that this church takes prayer requests seriously, lifting one another up to the Lord, praying for one another in times of distress. But let me ask you a question. Do you ever pray for others here at the church when they are not in distress? When they do not have physical needs or emotional needs or have some specific need that they've asked you to pray about during prayer request time. Do you ever just spend time praying for your brothers and sisters in Christ by praying for their spiritual condition? Uh, praying for their relationship with the Lord. Praying that they will grow closer to the Lord. That's what Paul done here for the church at Ephesus that we're going to see in just a moment. According to God's Word, that should be our main concern when praying for others. Throughout Scripture, we find the Apostle Paul and others praying for the spiritual condition of their fellow Christians. If, if we're all saved, if we trust in Christ our Savior, then we're okay as far as our eternal destiny goes. But we still need to pray for one another that we'll grow spiritually and grow in our relationship with the Lord. So look with me at this prayer, Ephesians 1, verses 15 through 23. Paul said, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion in every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Uh, study that scripture this afternoon, this week. I hope you'll save your sermon notes and go back through them throughout the week. Paul was always so faithful as we should in thanking God for his fellow Christians as we see in verses 15 and 16. Again, it says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Is it that wonderful to have a church family that is exactly that family? I know that this church is thankful for one another and it shows when we love one another and we take care of each other. Uh, but look at verses 17 and 18. Paul was praying specifically for the people at the church at Ephesus to know the Lord better. To know the Lord better. Look at verses 17 and 18 again. He says, I keep asking 
that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Circle those words, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, uh, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Uh, Paul prayed that the Lord would give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they may know him better and that the eyes of their heart might be enlightened, might be opened. Uh, life as a Christian is so much more than just being saved and, and coming to church and listening to others preach and teach the Word of God. God wants to have a personal relationship with each and every one of us where we grow closer to Him and get to know Him and His will for our lives. He has plans for all of us and, and get to know His will for our lives better. The, the more we know Him, the more that we love Him, the more love He bestows. And I'm sure that all of us here today can testify uh, of times in our lives that we were just growing in our relationship with the Lord, spending time with Him every day and growing closer to Him. I remember, I've told you before, when I was a teenager from the ages, or, or even a preteen, from, from age 11 to 14, I was growing in my relationship with the Lord. And, and I, I just remember learning more and, and, and praying for God to give me wisdom by then and growing in my relationship with Him. And if you can think of times in your life that that has been the case with you, isn't it just some of the sweetest time of your life? It may have been just recently. It may have been uh, during the pandemic. We were all stuck at home. It, it may have been 10 years ago or whenever, but all of us can think of times. Can you remember those special times? And if, you, if, you're, if, if it's not lately, then go back to that time. Ask God this morning as we talk about this. Ask God to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That you might know Him better. Ask Him to open up the eyes of your heart. Paul prayed that the Lord would give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now, how many of us here today could use more wisdom in the decisions that we have to make and that we face every day? Uh, not just the big decisions, but even the little small decisions that we face every day. We need more wisdom. James 1.5 says, If any one of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Uh, but what was Paul talking about when he prayed for the spirit of wisdom and revelation? Think about this morning. We know what wisdom means. We all need wisdom. We need godly wisdom. Uh, the book of James talks about two types of wisdom, godly wisdom and earthly wisdom. Uh, we need book knowledge, of course. We need orderly knowledge, but we need godly knowledge and godly wisdom more than anything. But look at that second word, revelation. Revelation. I remember as a young child trying to understand what this passage of Scripture meant. I have two dictionaries that I still have from my childhood. One we had in our family, we had a Webster's Dictionary that was published in 1951. I wasn't born until 1962, but we, then we had this dictionary that was published in 1951. And then we bought a newer one, I got a newer one that's from 1980. And there's a big difference in them. Uh, in 1951, I looked up the word revelation. It means a revealing, revelation means a revealing of something previously unknown. Think about that. Revelation, that's where we get the word, a revealing of something previously unknown. But also in 1951 edition, it says, God's disclosure of himself or of his will for man through the scripture. I, it was amazing to read that. God's disclosure of himself or his will for man throughout the scriptures. Fast forward to the 1980 edition, they take that out. It doesn't say a word about God. It just says a revealing of something previously unknown. Paul prayed that the Lord would continuously show himself to the church at Ephesus, revealing himself to them. A revealing of something previously unknown. I pray that he will show himself to you in a great and mighty way 
on a daily basis. God is so awesome and so mighty that we can never know everything about Him if we walk with Him for a hundred years. And that's why we're going to get to spend eternity when we get to heaven one day, learning more and more about Him. He wants us to commune with Him, though, in this lifetime by spending time with Him daily, reading His Word and praying to Him, talking to Him through the sweet miracle of prayer. Every time that we bow our heads and say, God, or Heavenly Father, or however you start your prayers, that is a miracle. Uh, that mere man, mere human being can literally talk to the God of creation, Almighty God. And He hears us. He listens. The Bible says that He stoops down and listens. You've heard me talk probably too many times about my first pastor, Dr. Jesse Henley. Jesse Henley dedicated his entire life to studying the Word of God. He knew the Greek and the Hebrew. They said that he didn't know how to do anything else. They, I remember... Them saying that he, he wouldn't know how to jump start a car with jumper cables because he, he didn't know how to do anything else. He just spent his entire lifetime studying the Word of God uh, because that's all he ever did was study God's Word and preach God's Word. And they, they tell me that thousands of people were saved under his ministry back in the 1940s uh, and when they did, had tent revivals all over the southeast and so forth. But I remember about a year before he died, back in the 90s at the age of 85 he told me personally he said I'm still learning something new about the Lord every day uh, just think about how much that we've got to learn and it's all good stuff it's all wonderful stuff uh, during these uh, last few chapters of, of John I want to uh, we're going to look at some scripture in John 16 in just a minute during these last few chapters of John uh, the book of John, the Gospel of John, Jesus was preparing the disciples for his departure. Uh, Jesus was trying to explain to him that he would soon be crucified and no longer be with them. And, and they couldn't really comprehend what he was trying to say. He, he promised them the Holy Spirit would come in his place. And, and it was too much for them to comprehend. They couldn't understand it. Even though they had walked with the Lord for three and a half years, they, during his ministry, they had practically lived with him, they still had more to learn. Uh, that, that boggles my mind. I, I just want to say, wow. They had heard his teaching in person uh, for three and a half years, but Jesus said that they had more to learn. You would think that they would pretty much know it all. But look with me at John 16, verses 12 and 13. Jesus says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. Talking about the Holy Spirit. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears. And He will tell you what is yet to come. So just like the disciples, you and I cannot handle all there is to know about God all at once. It takes an entire lifetime of growing, which is accomplished when we spend time with Him, allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us from His Word, the Bible. Uh, this is what the sanctification process is all about. The sanctification process begins at the moment of your salvation, and it, it, and it continues. We grow, and we're being conformed into the image of Christ. Uh, and, and it's not completed until we reach glory, when we receive a new body, when we reach heaven. But for now, God wants to give you and I the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we may know Him better. Now, how, how do we get to know Him better? I, three keys, real quick. Three keys to knowing God better. One, talking to God. Two, listening to God. Three, the local church. Me, me coming to church and hearing God's word preached and taught. So again, talking to God, we talk to God through prayer. Uh, listening to God. We listen to God by reading the Bible. By listening for the still small voice of the Holy Spirit that whispers in our ears. But then church is such a, a crucial part of it. Not just going to church, but becoming involved in church. Becoming involved in church where you're growing in your relationship with the Lord. Spending time with the Lord on a daily basis. Spend 10 minutes a day looking into His Word and praying. Uh, how do 
you get to know another person? Let's say you got a new neighbor moves in next door. How do you get to know another person? By talking to them and listening to them. By spending time with them. You, you may, if you're like me and most people today, you don't really know your neighbors like you used to. You might wave at them when you go to the mailbox and buy it. And, and it may take you a long time to gradually get to know them over a period of time. Or you can get to know them real fast if you spend a lot of time with them. It works the same time, the same way with the Lord. How much time do you spend with Him? Uh, an hour a week on Sunday morning, or several minutes a day every morning, spending time with the, the more time you spend with God, the more time you talk to Him, the more you listen to Him, the quicker you get to know Him, the more you get to know Him intimately. And God has a plan for every single person in this room today. He gave His Son to die on Calvary that we might be saved. He wants all of us to not only have eternal life, but abundant life while here on earth. And He wants all of us to have a personal relationship with Him that is continually growing. He wants all of us to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we may know Him better. He wants the eyes of our hearts to be enlightened in order that we may know the hope to which He has called us. Another prayer of the Apostle Paul, real quick, before we close for the Ephesians. Look at Ephesians 3, 14 through 20. Paul says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. And then verse 20 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at with." work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Pray these two prayers this week for your church family. Pray these prayers for yourself in chapters 1 and 3 of Philippians. And let's all try to remember to pray for each other even our spiritual needs. And, and pray for me and my family that we will know him better. 2 Peter 3.18 says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory, but now and forever. Amen. One of my favorite verses of Scripture. If you're not growing, then you're going backwards. There's no in between. You're either growing or you're going backwards. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for the time looking into Your precious Word. And Lord, we thank You for these prayers that the Apostle prayed the Apostle Paul prayed for the church of Ephesus. Lord, I thank you for the church at Shadner and for my church family that prays for me and my family on a regular basis and prays for one another, especially for our physical needs, Lord. But we need to pray for one another spiritually that we would all grow closer to your precious side. Lord, we thank you that Jesus gave us his life that we might it uh, made it possible for us to have a relationship even in this lifetime before we get to heaven that we may know you better. And Lord, we just thank you for loving us. We pray for our invitation for your will to be done. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. If you will please stand with me as we sing our invitational hymn on page 275. I surrender all.
coming this morning. Just a couple of prayer requests before we go. Um, we got a lot of folks out today. I don't, I don't know if has anybody talked to Zine Wallace lately. I'll give her a call. But um, Benny and Becky are traveling this Sunday and next Sunday. It's yes, it's a prayer for them as they travel. Um, Pat Turner's having surgery a week from tomorrow at Fat Piedmont. So pray for Pat. Harvey, I'm not sure. Well, I have to check up on Harvey as well. Um, and then Juanice, Juanice is not here this morning, but she texted me this morning and told me she would not be here. But she said, I have a special unspoken prayer request. So I told her that I would share that with you and, and she would be praying for Juanice and her prayer request. Um, Marvin's niece, I believe it is, um, diabetic. I have to have a co-amputated or so forth to pray for her. Who else do we need to pray for? Go. Anything else before we go? All right, I'll turn it back over to Levi. All right, if you're seeing a bit of a general, son, increase the volume of children.